Hey there, ladies. Hi, my name is Amy, and I'll be your waitress today. Is there anything I can get you to drink while you're looking at the menus? Hi, my name is Demeter Zadik, and in this video I will briefly walk you through the Rain character rig. One of the goals for this rig was to make it accessible for beginners, while still providing all the tools to make the rig viable in a small but professional production. Let's start with the rig's user interface. You can press the N key to bring up the sidebar, and click on the Cloud Rig tab. In the Outfits panel you can find settings that change how the character looks. Most of the options currently available are only there to help the animator hide certain parts of the character when they don't need to see them. There are also options to customize the outfit, but for now that mostly consists of hiding the scarf. We might add more outfit and hairstyle options to this character in the future, and then those options would also show up here. The next panel is fairly self-explanatory, as it's just a copy of the armature layer buttons, except they have names assigned to them. The settings panel is where you find settings that actually affect how the rig behaves, such as FKI key switching, parent switching, etc. It may look like a daunting amount of sliders and buttons, but note that this UI is not context sensitive to what bone is currently selected, which is what you may be used to from other rigs. Instead, all rig options are displayed at all times. The first category is FKI key switches. By default, the spine and the arm are set to FK and the legs are set to IK. You can use the slider to switch between them, but this will cause any posing you already had to be lost. If you want to preserve your pose, use the button instead. This will toggle the value and also snap the required bones in the right place. The next settings affect how the IK controls behave. IK stretch lets you stretch the limbs and spine for cartoony effects like smearing. Here you can change what part of the body the IK controls are parented to. By default, IK controls are parented to the root, but for certain workflows and movements, it may make your life easier if, for example, the IK hand controls are owned by the chest. And once again, you can use the button instead of the slider to make sure your controls don't jump away. The IK pole follow option lets you constrain the pole target to the main control itself. This is mostly up to your personal preference, and if you don't have one, I can recommend the defaults. Finally, some FK hinge settings. Of course, these only work when the limb in question is set to FK mode. Enabling hinge means that the limb will no longer inherit rotation from its parent. This can be useful in many situations, so if you find yourself counter-animating a shoulder or thigh or the head, consider trying this option. Remember, you can even use a value between 0 and 1. The face settings I will come back to later, and as an animator you don't need to worry about the viewport display panel. Now let's get into the actual rig. You've already seen me play with the IK and FK controls, but when you enable the secondary layers, you'll see that some controls are doubled. This is to enable a workflow where, for example, you might want to animate larger movements on one bone and smaller details on the other. Or in the case of FK, it can help avoid gimbal lock problems, since a parent control can change its child's orientation without aligning any of its gimbal axes. But if you're a beginner, you can feel free to ignore these and just stick to the primary layers. The stretch layer is where you go for detailed cartoony effects, as well as small adjustments to get smooth curves on the character. You can scale these bones on their local y-axis to adjust the curvature, or scale them uniformly to change the volume. You may need to enable X-ray to see some of these controls. The controls for the palm and fingers were kept straightforward and minimal. You have metacarpals and you have the fingers. You just have to rotate them and that's it. The hair and scarf have identical controls to the FK limbs, so there's nothing you haven't already seen there. Now let's finally look at the face. The first thing to note is the color coding of the controls. Yellow controls are the most important, as they affect the largest areas, such as an entire eyebrow, or an entire eyelid, the sneering of the nose, raising and puffing of the cheeks, opening of the jaw, and moving the corner of the mouth. Green controls affect subsections of those parts, like parts of the nose bridge, or sections of an eyebrow, or sections of the lips. 
and the blue controls affect very small areas and are therefore minute adjustments to the geometry. In the face extras layer, you have some very large controls, such as for the entire top and bottom of the face. You also have lattice controls to give you some quick and easy squash and stretch. These don't affect the rest of the rig, so you would want to use it towards the end of your workflow. With these controls you can move and scale the entire eye socket area if you wish. And with this one you can slide the mouth around the face. The face tweak layer consists purely of very low level controls for tiny adjustments. Now let's go back to the UI to see what face related settings we skipped earlier. First off, you can enable the eye dots. These are simply a pair of white dots that can give you a fake cartoon reflection. You have a couple of controls for it sitting on the iris. The dummy eyes option is an alternate eye mesh to better help visualize your eye lines in the viewport, however the dummy eyes can clip with the eye dots. Next up, the face settings. There aren't that many of them, and you probably don't need to touch any of them, but I'll show them for the sake of thoroughness. The teeth follow mouth setting affects the behavior of the mouth master control that we saw earlier. When enabled, the inside of the mouth will also follow this control. Let's take a look at sticky eyelids. Let me bring the eye target closer so you can see what happens when the eyes look around. And as I increase the sticky eyelid setting, you can see that the skin around the eye reacts a lot more. Be very careful when increasing this though. While it can make your workflow faster, such automated motion on the face can also look cheap. Ideally, you would want to animate these subtleties manually. But if you don't have time for subtlety, you can even expand this effect to the outer ring of the eye. The eye target parent, fairly self-explanatory, affects what bone the eye target control should follow. Just like IK controls, by default it will follow the root. You can also control the eyes directly by rotating these controls. In that case, you would want to set the eye target parent to be the head. If you're just starting out, my advice for animating this face rig is that you should definitely aim to animate these controls in a hierarchical order from top to bottom, that is, start with the yellow ones, then the green ones, and then the blue ones if you need them. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rig.